Hey everybody, welcome back to Josium Draws, and welcome back to a new episode of Art Style Analysis. The series on the channel where we look at popular art styles from comics, games, manga, and whatever else it might be, and we try to deconstruct it and ultimately draw our own characters in it. Today's uh, episode is about Hunter x Hunter, or Hunter x Hunter, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Okay, so as with previous art style analysis episodes, I've broken down uh, the style into some of the most important features I could think of to uh, represent the um, style of whatever we're recovering. So for Hunter Hunter, I've broken it up as you can see into these different sections of the eyes, eyebrows, ears and noses, uh, as I feel like these are the most important things in the Hunter Hunter style. So to begin with, uh, let's look at the eyes. now. Um, there's quite a lot of variation actually in um, the eyes um, as you can see I've got a bunch here that I've actually drawn and used from references uh, from different characters so to start with at the top we've got these big uh, kind of big cartoonish eyes and these are actually eyes from gone and as you can see um, there's actually no bottom lid at all or any indication of a top lid or any kind of like actually eyelashes at all um, what it is is just this thick, almost backward C looking shape for the actually the top lid and then there's um, just the white of the eye actually below. There's not actually, like I said, any bottom lid or anything at all uh, to indicate that there's any eyelashes, which is kind of interesting. Um, and now you've got this big uh, iris and um, kind of like you've got this big highlight here that's always in the left corner um, and obviously you've got the pupil. Um, and you got like this bit of colour at the bottom here. Obviously this is a black and white sketch, but you know, if it was gone to eyes, you know, but it's kind of like orangey, yellowishy brown. Um, that's pretty much all it is to it. Um, it's kind of a little bit more difficult to actually draw this type of eye uh, than it might actually look actually. Uh, getting that kind of like backward C shape is actually really difficult uh, and so you're gonna have to really kind of like move your wrist in a way so you can get actually that kind of like shape but it's actually a really nice eye, and uh, obviously it's best known uh, to be on uh, Gon's face. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, other types of eyes I managed to see are um, like some, uh, variations like Killua's eyes, where, as you can see, there's quite a difference between each of the eyes. Whereas Gon's, it's like big and open, wide, and kind of like that big circular, round, and friendly shape. Um, Killua's eyes are a little bit more cat-like, a little bit, a little bit more feminine, I guess you could say. Um, and uh, as you can see, he actually has an indication of a bottom lid here, and then he has um, his, these kind of like arched curved top lids here with um, a bit here sticking out, which represents the eyelash. And then you've got, he's actually got these like folds on the top, which actually represent the top folds of the eyelids. So it's actually quite a stark difference between Gon's eyes. Um, same kind of like big kind of like pupil and iris here. Um, just a little bit of like colour at the bottom here that would be shown and then just big uh, highlights. So it's still sort of similar to the eye, to Gon's eye, but uh, it's a little bit more di different. It's a little bit more feminine. It's a little bit of a different shape. It's a more cat-like. Um, and that's probably just to show Killua's kind of like, kind of cat-like reflexes and uh, kind of like, kind of assassin nature. Uh, next uh, eyes that I kind of like actually saw while researching for this is um, the eyes of Leorio. Now, as you can see, there are a complete difference between, uh, you know, to Killua and Gon's eyes. They're a lot smaller and they're a completely different shape. It actually um, goes up. It actually goes uh, up on this angle, then it goes across and it comes down like this on this slope and then juts out there for the. Um, the actual eyelash so it's a completely different shape uh, so you've got to really pay attention if you want to maybe do maybe more adult or kind of like or just all the characters in general um, for uh, kind of like younger characters maybe kid characters or something like that Gone and Killer are probably your best bets um, to uh, if you want uh, like reference for eyes but uh, Leorio's eyes are quite different as a, the, this kind of type of shape um, so you're going to have to really pay, pay attention to your shapes, but uh, just like Killua, he has an indication of a bottom lid, and he has um, these kind of like lines that represent the top of the lids, um, and then obviously his eyes are a little bit smaller, because obviously the eyes are smaller on the face. Um, just a round uh, pupil and, and uh, iris with a little bit of colour at the bottom there, and then obviously his highlight there. So that's quite interesting, uh, how kind of like the, all of the characters 
get, I guess you could say, the the shape and size of the eyes actually changes. Um, that's interesting. Um, the next set of eyes that I thought were interesting was actually Chairman Netero's. Now, his are quite different from the rest of the characters because he's, he's such an older character. Um, he would have a little bit extra lines here and there to show his aging. And as you can see, he has these lines here that represent the bags of his eyes. Um, he has these top ones here that show the skin sagging. And then obviously these ones on the edges here, which are creases, uh, to show where the skin actually creases on the skin. Um, similar like with Leorio, um, his eye shape is completely different as well, which is what I was talking about the, like earlier, how there's so much variety, you know, how much variety Togashi actually puts into his character's eyes, which kind of makes sense because when you've got lots of different characters, you want multiple different features. You don't want that same face syndrome um, that I see like a lot of like generic looking anime actually have, where all the eyes are the same, all the faces are the same, like the eyebrows and everything, they're all just the same. So um, it's really nice to see like so much variation in just eyes and um, eyebrows and all these kind of other different features. Um, but uh, with his eyes, you, again, you've got to pay attention to the shape. So it actually kind of like comes up like this and then it immediately kind of like slopes down here and then it juts out there to kind of like make that really weird shape. Um, uh, and obviously these tear ducts here, they don't actually connect the two eyes together. And then there's a little bit of a gap here. And then obviously his uh, bottom lid here, shown here has so far the biggest bottom lid. Um, and it kind of curves around and it kind of like goes in this sort of S shape. And it curves around on this big C curve, like that, which uh, creates the bottom lid. And all these kind of like lids are kind of like decently thick sized, depending on what kind of character they are. But Chet Emanetto actually has quite thin um, eyes, and then obviously he has these sm really, really small pupils with just one single highlight. And there's actually no kind of like complicated iris or. Um, like pupil in his eyes it's just a simple black shape with a one uh, single highlight which i thought was really interesting um that's chairman netero his eyes and then um i believe uh, this character is called beans he's like the little green guy at the hunter hunter association and um i believe he represents chairman netero but his eyes again it's another variation he's kind of like a weird oddball character that kind of like really sticks out when you first see him um, and he just has these really big, round, cartoonish eyes. It's really, it's really not that complicated. Um, so if you ever wanted to make some sort of like weird character like Beans, uh, use him as reference. You know, all these different features are there to be mixed and matched together to create new and unique characters. And uh, Beans is pretty interesting. And he just has these big, round, circular eyes. And then he just has these um, black dots for the pupils. But what I noticed was that it actually does not touch the actual edge of the eye there it there's some what of a distance between you know the where the actual uh kind of like i guess you could say one big eyelash i guess or just the outline of the eye um it doesn't actually touch it which is interesting there's also no highlights in his eyes at all from the screenshot of a looked at of beans there is no highlights so just keep that in mind and then finally the last kind of like unique eye or pair of eyes i would i uh, found was actually Meruem. Now, obviously, Meruem being the Ant King, he was never going to be truly human, but um, I did find his eye shape quite interesting, how immediately it's completely different to the rest of the characters because the um, actual, like, the thickness of his eyes, or eyelash, I guess you could say, of whatever that is, is so thick. It's actually really interesting. Um, it's almost like he's wearing mascara, I guess. Um, or like eyeliner or something, but it's really interesting and it's obviously his eye shape is very cat like You know tapping into that kind of like animalistic kind of like uh, looking for the character But um, you see it comes out with like a point here and it comes arches up and over and it sticks out here for this big kind of like Eyelash or top of the eye uh, It did not have any kind of like uh, like uh, skin flaps for like the top lid um, it was just this black shape, so I'm thinking that might be merged into one. And then immediately comes in like this, and it slopes down like that. Um, so it kind of creates that weird shape. And then obviously back here, it comes down into this S curve, comes around, and then it gets really thin at the bottom there, which is where the eye meets the actual like eyelid. And it comes back and it becomes thick again into this uh, thick point. So it's kind of like that really cat eye look. 
Um, I don't know if you got the whites of the eye here, and then you got the iris, and then the uh, tiny, tiny, tiny pupil. Uh, there is no highlights in his eyes. So if you want to make some sort of like a uh, character similar to Meruem, I guess um, you'd best off using him as a reference, or maybe some of the other um, ant guards for reference to maybe draw the eyes so you can get them accurate. But there's no highlights. It's just one singular flat color with a tiny pupil, uh, and it's in that kind of a like cat eye shape. So hopefully, I explained kind of like the uh, variations and differences between the different eyes and kind of like how they're actually really interesting and how much variation Togachi actually puts in his um, characters. Uh, next we're going to focus on the eyebrows so I'll explain that in the next section. Okay moving on now the next section I wanted to cover was eyebrows because as you can see there's quite a lot of variation in the eyebrows as well which is what I really like about Hunter Hunter and Togashi's work um, in particular is that he, he has so much variation in the facial features for his characters not just the eyes which you would think would be the most important but actually in the eyebrows as well for his different characters so again beginning with the uh, gone as a reference as you can see his eyebrows aren't exactly normal or typical or usual eyebrow shapes they're actually these kind of like really interestingly high arching uh, shaped eyebrows they actually come up way up way up further than you would actually think on his face and then they actually kind of like round out there it's it rounds out and then it comes immediately down at an angle to a to a particular point and then it, as you can see on this bottom section here um it actually curves up quite a lot and then obviously comes back around for that kind of almost like scythe shape so that's kind of interesting how you'd remember that is um just think of like um scythes maybe how uh, you know like a grim reaper scythe and you'd be able to get that kind of like interesting shape and then just underneath here i've just done a little bit of shading just to show like the fold in the um actual crease of the eye um but this top section here is always thicker than this uh bottom section there uh as it kind of like, gets thicker towards this top here and then it comes down to a point um these are obviously really iconic and recognizable for gone as it's kind of like in this kind of like top kind of like uh, shape they're like this triangular shape but like I said I would just say just study some references of gone like I have and um, you should be able to replicate them pretty easily um, the next section or next kind of like um, bit of eyebrows that we're gonna look at is just a uh, killer with eyebrows when I looked at it they were really quite easy and simple they're just just this uh, simple curved arched eyebrows that aren't really too uh, special they're kind of thin um, and get kind of like thick towards this middle section here just to sort of show some volume and uh, that's it really it's just really curved and simple shaping eyebrows so if you don't want to uh, you know have a really complicated eyebrow shape uh, just I would say use killer with uh, for reference uh, the next ones I would say are Leorios uh, and these are kind of interesting because now we're kind of like they have this kind of like weird S shape here that kind of flicks out like this and it rises up and it comes down to a point and then he has these like little sections at the bottom uh, uh, here or at the end that could that represent kind of like just small hairs just to show that you know a little bit of variation and you have these like little hairs there um, just to maybe show some thicker eyebrows you know all like stray hairs um, so it kind of like comes in this cur S curving like X S shape and nothing really too difficult just make sure that this bottom section is thicker than the um, back section here this like top section as it's coming to a thinner point and then obviously don't forget these uh, little diddly bobs at the end uh, for his like eyes eyebrow shorter um, so they're quite interesting actually when, when you look into the nuances of these characters you see these little differences between their features and it really makes them stand out and really makes them them now the biggest change I saw was um, in some of Takashi's older characters so um, like Killer with Grandfather I can't remember exactly what he's called uh, but he has these big long eyebrows and same for Chairman Netero um, it's a stark contrast to the other eyebrows where they were maybe dark maybe some sort of like simply reasonably lengthened eyebrows but then you get to Netro's and he's just uh, got these big old bushy brows um, it starts kind of like thin and it towards his brow it actually comes up at an arching angle and then it comes down and then it just immediately rises up again kind of like how Gon's eyebrows do in this kind of like tick shape and then it comes down here and then actually kind of like bows in there to make it thinner and then it comes immediately 
back out into um, these three big tufts of um, hair for his eyebrows. And I think these are really actually kind of cool. You've got this thinner shape here and then it immediately goes into this thicker shape and then it goes back into this thinner shape. So it kind of creates that kind of like cool W effect. And, uh, and then obviously rises up here and then comes back to this thick section. And then it goes thin again and it kind of comes back here and then reaches around here and then back to the uh, back to the brow there. Um, so I just think that's a really unique shape and it's a good way to kind of show Netero's age as his hair is quite long uh, compared to the other characters. And it just makes him visually interesting and uh, you know he's one of the most recognizable Hunter Hunter characters of all time I would argue. So it's kind of makes sense to give him some kind of like unique feature. Uh, and his eyebrows are kind of odd but I kind of like them and they're very unique so that's kind of like what they look like. Um, so if you wanted to do all the characters I would recommend just slapping some Netra eyebrows on there. It would make the characters look a lot older and um, it just looks really cool and plus they're like a unique shape. Like I said just remember to use your references and you should be fine. Um, and finally the last set of eyebrows here is actually from one of the uh, Phantom Troop, the spiders, it is Uvogin. Now I thought he had some really interesting eyebrows because his are actually quite thick and bushy but at the end here you can see it actually gets kind of wild and chaotic because it goes into this like zigzaggy pattern. Um, maybe just to show his kind of like wild nature maybe. It goes well with his kind of like bushy sideburns that he also has. Um, he, and it goes well with the rest of his features, you know, since he's quite big and muscular and thick. Um, you know, it makes sense that a lot of features on his face would be quite big and thick and bushy anyway. And so his eyebrows kind of like start off in this curved um, section here and then they come up and then just come to these like jagged, uh, like almost like lightning bolt shapes. And then it kind of covers back around here, back into the brow, um, similarly for the other side. Um, so if you maybe want a more wilder character, you don't really have to be that specific with it. Um, as you can see in this left one here, it's kind of different to the other one. I was using a, a reference of Uvogin, but um, you see I'm quite messy here and it works really well for sketchy, kind of like just quick sketches of characters that you might want to make. Um, but I actually really, really like his eyebrows. I think they're kind of interesting. And again, we've got what one, two, three, four, five characters here, uh, and uh, their eyebrows are really interesting. All of them are completely unique, completely different in some sort of way. Even though you know ones like um, Killers and uh, Leorios are quite similar. Leorios are more of like an S curved shape, and then you have like those little hairs that are sticking out there for a little bit more variety. Whereas Killers are just kind of like that simple, like curved almost backwards C shape, um, just really simple. There were other characters that had different eyebrows that I haven't shown here, just like uh, I think Beans has some eyebrows, but they're just really simple lines that you really don't need uh, a reference for. You could just uh, draw them on and they would look uh, interesting. But I do like, like I said before, how much variation Togashi actually has with each of the um, features on his characters and I thought the eyebrows were really interesting especially Chairman Netoros as it's also like I said represented on the um, grandfather um, of the Zoldix he has like big eyebrows I think um, Kilo's father also has kind of those big bushy eyebrows as well so a lot of the older characters actually have these kind of big bushy eyebrows um, so just remember that if you want it to make an older character uh, but that's kind of like all the variations of eyebrows I could actually find for the style so let's move on. Okay, now we're moving on to the ears. Now, um, you might not think that ears might be a very important uh, character, but I would think that they are. And as you can see, um, there wasn't much variation in the ears uh, as the way that Tagashi draws his ears on his characters, but I w did know is that um, he likes to play around with the earlobes. As you can see on these two examples here that I've got of um, Meruem here and then German Netro, is that the earlobes are complete, completely different shapes. On the Meruem one, it actually reaches from the top of uh, like where his jawline uh, meets his ears and it actually comes way down here into this really unique earlobe shape. So I would say if you um, maybe want to make a less sort of like human character, I'd say just play around the earlobes as it's kind of like consistent in Hunter Hunter. Um, and as for every other ears, you know, it's kind of in that same kind of like curved ear shape, except it kind of like comes around here and it comes down here. 
and it curves up. Like that's some kind of creates that really weird C shape. And he's just got all these different shapes inside of his actual ear with uh, what I can see. But you could just kind of forego that and kind of just do a regular ear shape but change up the uh, actual ear lobes. Um, similar with Chairman Netro here, as you can see he's got the side of his face there that I've drawn and then um, kind of a similar sort of like ear shape where it actually comes up from the top of the, like the side of the head, it comes up here, actually flattens out there and then it curves around, comes in there and then juts out and then sticks in again and then it comes down here, this big drooping ear lobe shape. Which I kind of really like it. Again, makes Chairman Netro stick out as he's kind of like a main character, right? Um, and then he has kind of like these ear um, ornaments or whatever you would call them. Um, and I actually really like these. They are kind of like a really nice, unique shape, and it kind of like breaks up his shape as well. And then obviously you could just got these uh, lines here that represent the inner of the ear. Um, you should be fine if you just look up uh, reference for regular ears. And then obviously you've got the regular human ears here that are represent on most of the characters that I thought that were really consistent with Leorio, consistent with Gorn and Kilua. A lot of the just normal regular human characters. Um, that don't have anything different like Netero does. Uh, really interesting, it actually um, comes up here at an angle like that, it like, curves up and then it rounds out here at the top and it comes down, curves here at this section and then comes down straight and then just out for the earlobe and it curves around in there for the small earlobe. Um, so it's actually kind of interesting, like I said, you just got to watch your references and just make sure you know where it curves and rounds out, um, you know, on the characters. I'd say Gon is a really good example and really good reference for this as his ears are quite big, aren't they? So, and they're always on display, so there's loads of references or you could just go through the show and find different shots of Gon and um, use his ear as references. Plus his, uh, like, facial, like, any kind of, like, hair doesn't actually get in the way or obscure his ears, so they're actually really clear view of what, how, like, Takashi draws his ears. And then obviously, this inner section here for the ear, um, it's really nothing, like, too complicated. It just kind of, like, curves up here, comes down, sticks in, and then curves back into it, like, where the face actually meets the ear. And you just got this really simple curved, C-curved shape um, for, like, the other inner section of his ear. So, it's really nothing too complicated, I would say. Like I said, using Gon as references is really, really easy. Um, and it's not too complicated. When you start, like, actually looking at the features of each of the characters, like I said, you notice these, like, little differences. Um, and with what makes characters, you know, unique, you know, for like Netro, he didn't have to give him these big earlobes. He could have just done the regular ears like all the other characters. But because Netro is a unique character, he had to give him sort of like unique features. And so giving his earlobes this kind of like really elongated or stretched look is really interesting. Plus, Netro is kind of like that Buddhist kind of like monk aesthetic, doesn't he? So uh, he has to have like something uh, unique about him. So, yeah, and then obviously Merum isn't actually human, so he would have all these kind of like weird features on him, uh, like his weird shell helmet and then his weird like really long earlobes. Uh, but those are actually kind of interesting. So I would say play around with the earlobes, change up the shape and size and length of them, make them really, really long if you want, or just really, really short, or don't give characters them at all. Um, it, that's what's the beauty of kind of like a variation and stopping the same face syndrome and kind of like stopping even from just drawing the same thing over and over again. So that was kind of like a really short section, but I think it's still uh, interesting and it's still worthy talking about it because, you know, if you want to truly draw on the Hunter Hunter style, you've got to look at every aspect. So that's just the uh, small section for the ears. Okay, moving on. Now we're moving on to the noses. Now, obviously, noses are pretty cool, and as you can see, I've got some different variations of noses here from different characters. Uh, these two here are actually from Gon and Killer, and they're actually they're actually different. They're not the same. Uh, so for Gon, he has kind of more of that uh, kind of a snouty nose. And if you look at it from the front here, um, it's just kind of like a straight line here, and then it actually curves quite uh, like on that kind of like C shape again. Uh, Gon has a lot of like C shapes in his design and uh, his front view of his nose, because obviously the nose is so tiny. Um, 
kind of has like really like, really weird curved shape and then it kind of like just comes in there so it's like that curved triangle look and it's just straight and then inside there's just shading um just show where the shadows are but in contrast with Kilowa, um there's actually a break up in the section when he's facing forward um it's just again got the same straight line there but it kind of like it comes juts out like that but then it, it has a break like i said and it kind of like juts out again to that triangle shape so depending on kind of like how you want to draw your character whether you want to draw more like a gone nose or a killer one nose uh, facing forward that's kind of what i would do and then they've just kind of got the shading in between um from the actual side though um it's a little even easier as you can see it just kind of curves up here like this kind of gentle curve shape and then it just immediately comes down in this kind of a really harsh angle um that's pretty much just for gone um but it's kind of interesting and you can really just use that over and over again it's a really easy and kind of like simple shape to do uh con in contrast i think I believe this is meruem's nose um that i used reference for but it actually it's kind of different from gone's nose as it's obviously first of all it's a lot bigger second of all you actually have an indication of a nostril there and the other ones especially from the side there wasn't actually any indication of a nostril at all um and then obviously it curves like in this big kind of a curve shape so it's actually a lot of a harsher steeper curve and it immediately kind of like juts out to this kind of like pointed look and then it kind of curves around in this s shape uh i would personally want to do this nose a lot more just because it's a little bit more interesting and it's got a little bit more features on it like i said with the um with the nostril showing um but i actually really like that one uh pretty simple and then you got um Chairman's Netro, Chairman Netro's nose here and it's actually again completely different it's got this big bulbousy nose that actually um, slants here starts slanting and it kind of comes down there curves around here and then juts in for the actual where the nostril actually is and then it curves like that and then uh, it's repeated on the other side with just some shading underneath um, so I actually kind of like really like that nose so you can actually really play around with a lot of the shape and style of kind of noses but if you want that typical hunter hunter look i'd say just go for the gone or meruem or killer one nose uh, depending whether you want your character facing it from the side or three quarters um and then finally let's look at this nose i know this nose is again from uh, uvogin as you can see it's completely different to the other ones it's a lot bigger it's a lot chunky it's a lot blockier just kind of like the rest of his character um and you've got the uh skin here that's actually kind of bunching up with the rest of his nose and then um this shape is actually kind of interesting it starts bunching up here and then it kind of bumps out like that and it kind of like um comes all the way down here until it flicks up just like the rest of the ears that uh not ears sorry noses it actually flicks up in that kind of like c shape and then it comes down here at an angle and then it comes back in and obviously you've got an indication of a nostril there and then you've got this really blocky uh, bit here for the uh, actual nostril which none of the other characters actually have um are have shown so far kind of juts out there goes up straight and then kind of curves round there like that and he's got, got all these other like little uh like uh lines on his on his nose just like little hatching lines and crease lines and just stuff like that and he's got this big long line here that separates between the different planes of his nose um so if you want like a bigger or blocky or chunkier character, uh, I'd say use the Uvogin as reference because he's actually really, really interesting. And then he's also got this uh, line here that just references where the um, the top and the bottom planes of the nose actually are. So you actually get to see like where the bottom of his nose is. And that's kind of interesting. Um, so there's actually quite a lot of variations in the noses. Um, most of the characters just have these kind of like triangular pointed noses. Uh, so I would say just stick to that kind of nose uh, as it's the most recognizable but feel free to like use some of the other characters just look at some of the other characters and um, have a good look at their nose and see kind of like what uh, shape they are try and uh, replicate that but like I said the most common nose I would say is probably that kind of like really weird uh, triangular curved nose uh, just remember um, there's uh, this curved bridge and it comes out to a point and it comes back in and then just add a nostril just a line there for the nostril if you really want to so that just does it about for the noses uh, and the last section we're going to move on to is actually facial structure so stick around for that okay and finally we are uh, looking at facial structure now as you can see in this example of uh, gone and killer here it's just a screenshot from the show 
And uh, if you look at the characters from the front, we'll use Gon here. He actually kind of has that section here that's actually connected to his ears. And it actually comes down and then it's quite rounded. It's obviously in that kind of classic anime triangly shape. Um, but it's actually a lot, it has a lot more curves and a lot more um, roundness to it rather than actually being quite sharp. Um, it's actually rounds here and then it comes down, but then it actually kind of curves in a section there and it rounds into the chin. Um, and the, obviously that's repeated on the other side where it's actually kind of like curves down there like that and a really kind of curvy angle and it, it curves in there, rounds there like a frizz cheeks. So it's actually quite interesting how, how actually round it is because usually when you think of anime or kind of like anime um, looking uh, faces, you all think of the triangular shape for the face. But it's actually in Hunter Hunter, it's it's sort of that shape, but it's actually a lot rounder, and it's just similarly repeated again there on uh, Kilo, as you can see. Uh, and then uh, on the right here, I've actually done my own character. I've sketched out my own character using what I've talked about today. Um, and it's just a really quick sketch, and you can see it's uh, using some of the features that I've actually already sketched out using reference for the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the eyebrows, and I've just made up this hair here. Um, using this screenshot as reference but uh, as you can see i've actually managed to be able to achieve a somewhat similar um kind of like uh kind of like character to what um they look like in hunter hunter obviously this is more of a childlike character that's using gone and killer as references but um as you see the facial structure is similar the, the same um curving on these kind of like uh angles here and then you've got the uh it, it rounds at the oops, at the at the chin there and then rounding out for this chin at the bottom i think i might have made my chin a slightly bigger than what it actually uh, is shown and gone and killer but um it's kind of interesting um and obviously the um facial structure for some of the other characters are um bigger or smaller depending on what their age are um if you look at this uh example of meroem you can see how much um of his face actually like curves in um, so it's actually coming down here, it rounds, and then it kind of juts in um, quite far actually. Comes down, round, and then it juts like that, and it rounds into this uh, big chin shape. Um, and then see his uh, nose does that. Uh, on, so that's kind of interesting. Um, I think I have an example of Chairman Netro here as well, I believe. There's a uh, Uvogin here actually. Um, I can see his is completely different to the other characters since he's a lot of o a lot older. He um, his chin is a lot bigger, so actually again curves around, juts like that, and then it, it just immediately comes in this big square jaw. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So like depending on what, how old your character is, you uh, might want to make your character's jaw bigger or smaller. Uh, Ah, here's that example of Cheminetro. If I just move him over. As you can see, he still has that sort of like classic, kind of like uh, triangular shape to his jawline and his facial structure. But it, this section actually for his jaw is actually a lot smaller than some of the other characters. It comes down, rounds, and then it juts out like that. And obviously his beard is, uh, is obscuring his chin, but I imagine it'd be sort of similar to Uvagin's where it's kind of like that squared off kind of like jaw and it does something sort of like that so as you can see a lot of uh, the older male characters have quite uh, blocky um, <clears throat> kind of like squared off jaws and just play around with how um, small or wide you want that kind of like side of the head to show uh, on your characters uh, but like I said, here's my kind of like example and quick sketch of a uh, <coughs> sort of like a kid in the Hunter Hunter universe, and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. I used uh, Gon's eyes as a reference, but uh, I used kind of like the uh, front-facing um, killer one nose where it's got that little break. I've used obviously Gon's ears as references. Um, I've used just this small mouth there. <coughs> but then I've obviously used these kind of like almost S-shaped curved eyebrows for actually. Um, from the Oreo, and it kind of gives us this kid like some a unique uh, face. And then I kind of used Gon's hairline here <coughs> as a uh, kind of like 
just some reference and then I just made up this shape for the hair and I think it actually looks pretty cool so uh, let me know what you think of this kind of like quick sketch and what do you think of all these uh, features did you know how many kind of like uh, features there were or how much variation there actually was in Hunter Hunter hopefully I've kind of like explained all these features and how to kind of like draw them and what the differences are to the best of my ability and hope it's being useful to somebody uh, but that's kind of like my breakdown of the Hunter Hunter art style. So if you like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that cool jazz. And let me know how it did. Uh, did I actually, like I said, explain uh, how each of the kind of like features are different? And, you know, would this actually really help you when drawing in the Hunter Hunter style? So that's all I've got for for now. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey there. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share my work around. I'll see you next time.